Hi, I'm Paris, and being in my 50s, for decades I've been hearing the message that when you hit 50, you better make sure you're taking enough calcium, because otherwise your bones can weaken and they're much more prone to breaking if you fall. Sadly, I saw this with my father last year. He fell and broke his hip, had to go to the hospital for surgery, months of rehabilitation, and he still needs help getting around. So, calcium supplements to the rescue, or so the TV commercials would have you believe, but it's not that simple. You do need to have enough calcium, but equally important is having a balance in your body of the calcium with the other elements that determine where it goes and what it stays out of. Of course, you want calcium in your teeth and bones. Where you don't want it is forming plaques in your arteries, in your kidneys, forming kidney stones, and as extraneous chunks of bone like heel spurs, bone spurs. I mentioned those three downsides of not having the right balance of elements in your system while you're taking lots of calcium because I've had all three. And that's been the calcium conundrum for me. To prevent this future risk of bone fractures, I'm actually doing some harmful things to my body by, in part, having too much calcium, but also by not balancing out the other elements I need so the whole system works right. So, what are some of the other factors you need to balance with sufficient calcium intake? Well, one of them is vitamin D, and another are the vitamins K and K2. Now, vitamin D is often added to foods that have a fair amount of calcium, like milk, they add vitamin D, and with that vitamin D, your body can better absorb it and put it to use, fixing it into your bones. And my doctor's been monitoring my vitamin D levels for probably the last 15 years. They started out low, and they're still pretty low. Like most Americans, I have trouble getting my numbers up out of the 20s. I think I'm in the 30s now, but that's with vitamin D supplementation. Now, living in sunny Austin, Texas, you would think vitamin D wouldn't be a problem because your skin naturally produces it when you're in the sun. But if I'm out in the sun more than 10 minutes here, even in the winter, I start to get burned. But the other health message you hear all the time to protect yourself from skin cancer is cover up, put on sunscreen whenever you're outside. So I have dutifully done those things. So the vitamin D I get is from supplements, and I think I've taken as much as, yeah, 5,000 units a day for several months. And that's the highest I was ever able to get my vitamin D levels just up into the 30s, whereas 50 I think is what they recommend. So these two competing health campaigns, both looking out for your health, can sort of have a detrimental effect on each other. On the one hand, you're supposed to be having more calcium, and on the other, you're supposed to stay out of the sun, which is your body's natural way of producing vitamin D. So what does high calcium levels along with low vitamin D levels get you? Well, it got me two kidney stones, most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. They say that passing a kidney stone is the one thing a man can experience that approaches the pain that women experience in childbirth. What else can out of balance calcium and vitamin D levels get you? Well, you can get plaques in your arteries. You can get coronary artery disease, which your heart doesn't like very much. You can have erectile dysfunction from plaques blocking blood flow elsewhere. You can have kidney disease from it as well. You should not have calcium building up on the inside of your arteries, but when the calcium isn't being directed where to go and what to do, that often happens. Another fun thing you can have with out of balance levels are bone spurs. Heel spurs in my case, my most recent heel spur was just a couple months ago and I stopped taking the calcium. I also stopped taking the vitamin D. I'm, I'm working on balancing this all out, but fortunately that bone spur on my heel was able to dissolve and go away on its own. I didn't have to have surgery for it. So we have a solution. Take vitamin D supplements when you take calcium supplements. Except, as I mentioned, even taking relatively high levels of vitamin D supplements, I still couldn't get my vitamin D levels up to a really good normal level. So could there be some other factors influencing fixing calcium in the bones and not letting it go places it shouldn't? There are. One of them is K2. Not the mountain and not the controlled substance, vitamin K2. Taking K2 supplements was actually recommended by my doctor last year. She saw studies that showed that K2 is so good at fixing calcium in the teeth and bones that it can actually decalcify those spots in your arteries and other places in your body where you shouldn't have the calcium. Sounded good to me, but after a few months of taking a K2 supplement daily, that's when I developed the heel spur. Now, it could just be coincidence, but after a few months of taking a K2 supplement along with my calcium and vitamin D supplements, I developed that heel spur, something I hadn't had before, so it seemed to me like the K2 was doing such a good job 
of fixing the calcium, it was actually creating some new bones I didn't really need. Now I would certainly trade some additional bone bumps here and there for cleaned out arteries, but I'm not sure that's what's happening. I feel like the balance is still off and I can't quite figure out what combination of things to take. Should I just rely on the healthy foods that I'm now eating to supply my body naturally with the right amount of K2, the right amount of vitamin D, and the right amount of calcium? Well, according to my food logging app on my phone, I end up with a lot of days that look like this. On the advice of my doctor, I'm on a vegan diet, and on my own research, I've cut out processed foods, I've cut out fats and oils, and so I end up a lot of days not even reaching the minimum RDA for calcium. Now, I do take a multivitamin several times a week. It has a tiny bit of calcium and some vitamin D, but I really don't want to go back on supplements trying to balance this all out. I really want the benefits of the K2 supplementation, but I know there are some foods that provide you with more K2 and I'm thinking the best way to manage this, the best way for my body to balance things out so it's not dumping calcium in my arteries or but it's also not producing additional bone growths is to let my body sort it out from the foods that I eat rather than putting in concentrated pills with the different elements that I think it's looking for in the combination that I think it will like best. Basically, at this point, I'm kind of lost as to what's the best thing to do. I do have a doctor's visit next week, my regular checkup, so I'll see what my numbers look like then. I'm expecting my vitamin D levels will be back down because I haven't been continuing with the supplementation. But I will ask my doctor, the one who recommended I try out the K2, what I can do or if there's some other testing they can do to keep me in just the right balance with calcium so I won't be falling and breaking my bones when I'm older, but I also won't be growing additional bones while I'm younger. And I just wanted to put it out there in case someone else has been through the kidney stone misery, the arterial plaque worries, the heel or bone spurs that limit your movement, and if you've had dealings with calcium, vitamin D, K2, and have tried these things out and have some advice to offer me, please comment down below this video. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next review.